Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of the concert version of Donizetti's La Favorita with Pietro Rizzo on the podium for the orchestra and William Spaulding on the podium for the chorus, which was shown at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. Now, this was a Donizetti opera that pretty much stood itself out from a lot of his other operas, mainly because this was one of those operas which has the mezzo-soprano in a title role. It's nothing new in the bel canto period because you've had operas or a lot of operas by Rossini which has the mezzo-soprano in the titular character. For example, in L'Italiana in Algeri, you had Isabella. And then you have Barber Seville with Rosina, Cenerentola with Angelina, and even La Donna del Lago with Malcolmo and Elena as the titular lovers. And even before the likes of Amneris, Azucena, Brangena, Eboli, Preziosila, Carmen, Dalila, Zelica, Kundry, Fricka, Ortrude, Zeglinda, being all of these coveted roles for a mezzo-soprano and even to some extent a Zwischenfachsängerin, you had Leonora di Guzman, which is a star vehicle for a lot of dramatic mezzos, usually high dramatic mezzos, the likes of Giulietta Simeonato, and Fiorenza Cosotto, Bianca Maria Cosoni, Shirley Verrett, and even Veselina Kasarova, and most recently, the likes of Elina Garancia, who was the Leonora of the evening. And interestingly enough, this opera was originally performed in French, but throughout history, there have been a lot of Italianate singers, mainly the Italianate mezzos, tenors, baritones, and bassos that sing this role or this opera in Italian. Usually I'm more familiar with the Italian version of each of the arias, like Ange si peur is an Italian spirito gentile, and then Leonora's aria, O mio Fernand, is O mio Fernando, and then with Baltazar's aria in Italian it's known as Splendon più belle le stelle. And then with Alphonse's aria, it's Vien Leonora. And then with Ines's little aria, Rayon Doré, it's in Italian, Be Raggi Lucenti. So I'm actually more familiar with this opera in Italian based on a lot of recordings that I've heard on YouTube. But what really makes this opera very much well known in my experience, definitely has to be the tenor aria, Ange si peur in French, and Spirito Gentile in Italian, in which it is a star vehicle for a lot of lyric tenors, and also a very challenging aria as well, because much like Di Quella Pira and Coriam Voliam in Il Trovatore and William Tell, respectively, this aria is freaking tough. It calls for some high seas to be thrown. Heck, even the role of Fernando, or Ferna, is really a tough sing, as he needs not only high seas, but some D flats thrown in for good measure. The same thing can be said about the titular. La Favorite, Leonor de Guzman. She really does need a lot of high notes as well and not just those low chesty notes. So when you think about it, this is definitely a great star vehicle for a lot of different singers. Now since this is a concert version of an opera, I'm not going to talk about the production, but instead I'm going to go straight to the singers. Singing the role of the titular heroine, of La Favorita, we have a singer that I've admired tremendously, mostly because of her art and because of just a lot of things, not just for her overall elegance, 
but also for her very fine voice. And she needs no introduction. I'm, of course, referring to the very fabulous Elina Garancha. Now, for those of you who don't know Elina Garancha, she started out singing a lot of lyric mezzo and coloratura mezzo roles, the likes of Rosina from Barbiere di Siviglia, Angelina from Cenerentola, and a lot of these, well, trouser roles, like both Sesto and Anio from La Clemenza di Tito, and even some of the feminine roles like Dorabella from Così Fan Tutte. She started out singing a lot of roles from Mozart, Handel, and even the likes of some of the early bel canto works, mostly from Rossini. But nowadays, she's been singing some of the, some of the more lyric dramatic roles like Carmen. And nowadays, she's even singing Santuzza. Heck, even in concert, she has also been singing some of the dramat dramatic mezzo stuff like Mon Que S'ouvre Ta Voix and even Eboli's first aria, Nei Giardin del Bello. Now, the thing about Leonora, as I've mentioned, is that she really needs a great mezzo-soprano who can navigate not just the low notes and not just the middle notes, but those high notes as well. It is a very challenging role for any mezzo or for any Zwischenfach zengerin to sing. Now, any mezzo who has done the likes of Carmen or Zeglinda, Kundri, Ortrud, Adriano, Venus, and to some extent Brangena, Azucena, Amneris, Preziosilla, Federica, Maddalena from Rigoletto, and even Ulrica from Ballo, Laura Adorno from La Gioconda, Herodias, the nurse from Frau in Schatten, and Clairon from Capriccio, and many, many other roles that require a dramatic mezzo to really sing with such really fine notes, pretty much has to combine the power and those meaty chest notes that really does make a dramatic mezzo-soprano stand out, and then combine them with really fine, delicate singing and those piercing high notes. It's a marathon role for any dramatic mezzo, much like Eboli and Amneris, and even Venus and Ortrud as well, and many other roles for a dramatic mezzo that requires a lot of high singing. Miss Garancha manages to sing her role really beautifully. Granted, she doesn't really have the overly chesty notes like, let's say, the likes of Elena Obrastsova or many other of my favorite dramatic mezzos, but she manages to sing her role with such finesse and such elegance that it starts to really become hypnotizing. And not to mention the dresses she wore for both of her scenes, I thought were just lovely. I especially love her second dress in which it's a black top combined with a with a pretty striped dress and a red sash in the middle. I thought it looked really lovely on her. She looked absolutely gorgeous. She was an absolute fine form and she was just really fine all around. She has a very gorgeous tambra which I have been always loving since I first heard her on YouTube, obviously. She has actually gone so far in her career that it's actually very wonderful. And with such a secure technique and a stage presence that doesn't go over the top, she did very finely in this role. It's actually kind of noticeable that she has gone from singing all of these boyish roles like Octavian from Rose and Cavalier, Cherubino from Marriage of Figaro, and both Sesto and Anio from La Clemenza di Tito, and now has found herself singing a lot more feminine roles. And I really feel that these are the roles that suit her really well. 
mostly because of a very fine technique, a very fine timbre, and even a good attention to detail on the text, and even on how she pronounces her vowels and consonants. She does her role very beautifully, and she sings it very well. Singing the role of her lover, Fernand, is the Belgian lyric tenor, Marc Lau. Now, I haven't really heard a lot of Marc Lau in terms of his voice, but as I read his biography, he basically sang a lot of high-lying lyric tenor roles, the likes of Arturo from Ipuritani, Antonio from La Fille du Regiment, but also some Mozart roles like Don Otavio from Don Giovanni. He is basically a specialist in a lot of the lyric tenor roles, not only in the bel canto repertoire, but also that of the Mozart repertoire, and even that of his, well, native French repertoire. With hearing him as Falna, I was totally blown away. He has a very, very fine technique. He has a very good stage presence, but more than anything, it's his voice that really sold it for me. Now, the thing about Falna is that he really needs a lyric tenor who can hit all of those high notes very well. It's no surprise that there has been a huge amount of lyric tenors, well, mostly Italianate, that flock to sing this role. Examples include Gianni Poggi, Alfredo Kraus, and Ramon Vargas, to name a few. They have had a lot of success with this role, mostly because Fernand is very well known for having very challenging passages, but also something, excuse me, having some of the most exciting music as well. Singing all of those high notes is definitely a huge challenge for any tenor who dares sing Fernand, especially in terms of the aria Ange si peur in which it has to be sung with such finesse, beauty, and with such accuracy that becomes quite the challenge for a lot of lyric tenors. Monsieur Lajo really rose up to the challenge and sang his part very well, and I really was going crazy over his high notes. He sang them all really beautifully, like meteors, they were just like comets raining down from the heavens and then just bursting with a whole bunch of sound and a whole bunch of brilliance that it just becomes so addicting to just watch him on stage. And nowadays, he also has some success in some of the Spinto tenor repertoire, the likes of Arnaud from Guillaume Tell and even Cavaradossi from Tosca. I could really, really see that there is a great future for him, especially in the more challenging roles. And with Monsieur Lajo singing the role of Fernand, it was such a treat. Singing the role of Le Roi Alphonse is a young French baritone by the name of Florian Sempé. Now, the thing about Alphonse is that his role is quite challenging as well, as he also has to have a fine technique, singing a lot of high notes, but also has to have a very regal presence, which is basically a cavalier baritone role. This role is quite lyrical sometimes, but it has a lot of dramatic singing for a baritone. Any baritone who specialized in the likes of Rigoletto, or Giorgio Germont, or Conte di Luna, or even Carlo from Hernani, Francesco from Masnadieri, and even Ford from Falstaff, Iago from Otello, whether he sings these noble baritone roles or even the villain baritone roles, he has to make sure that he has a very secure technique. And with Florian Sempe, I'm just totally 
totally won over by just how charming he looks. He's a very dashing young man. He has such an elegant stage presence. His total being is so regal and so noble and so, well, just like a gentleman that I was just totally won over. He has a very fine stage presence. His stage presence is totally arresting. It captivates me. His personality, his swagger, his ease, his manner, they all captivate me. And it all reflects on the very fine technique which he has in his voice. It's a sumptuous, lyric, dramatic, baritone voice. And can you believe that this gentleman is only in his late 20s and singing such a dramatic role like this? It's rather surprising. It's so awestruck that it basically is something that I'm very excited for and I'm full of anticipation every time he entered the stage. Every time he entered the stage, it's like he is so confident of what he's doing. He is totally in character. He manages to really hit all of the notes, not just in terms of his singing, but also in his presence as well. I really can't wait to see what this young baritone can do in the near future. I am seriously hoping that there will be a lot more roles for this gentleman. And then we have the role of the monk, Baltazar, known in Italian as Baldassare, sung by Ante Yarkunitsa. Once again, I really do love his timbre. I love the vocal and stage presence that he has. Now, the thing about Baldassar is that he needs a great basso cantante and even to some extent a basso profondo who can sing all those low notes really well with such an excellent technique. He also needs to make sure that his presence is equally as regal as the king's and also that of something that is noble as well. He basically needs a basso who can be able to sing very, very gently and even with such finesse and such virility that it basically becomes quite the treat. And with Mr. Yerkunitsa, you can never go wrong with Ante Yerkunitsa in whatever he does. Everything he sings, he does them very well with such a commanding stage presence that keeps me on the edge of my seat every time. And with such a voice that can pretty much move mountains and with such a regal presence and an elegant presence that I feel like just by watching him, I feel alive. And it's absolutely no surprise. He is definitely always in his A game. Everything that he's in, he is always in his A game. And then we have the role of the confidant of Leonor, Ines, sung by the ever lovely Elena Salagova. Now, the thing about Inez is that unlike any singer who's sung the role of Leonora, whether it be the Carmens or the Celicas, the Dalilas, or the Frickas, the Glindas, Brenguenas, and many other of the interpreters of the dramatic mezzo repertoire, Inez needs the total opposite. She needs a more lyrical sounding voice. She needs a light lyric soprano who can also navigate some of the florid passages and even have some high notes to be prepared in the mix. Any soprano who has sung the likes of, well, the other Ines from La Fricaine, Micaela from Carmen, L'Enfante from Le Cid, Eudoxie from La Juive, one of the Valkyries from Die Valkyrie, or one of the Flower Maidens from Parsifal, heck, even Elsa from Lohengrin, or Irena from Rienzi, and many, many other roles that requires a lyric soprano voice, and even the voice of heaven 
from Don Carlo and even Julieta from Un Giorno di Regno. Basically, Inez really does need a fine, lovely sounding, gorgeous, silvery toned lyric soprano voice. And that's what I feel that Miss Salagova offered. I have seen her as Gilda from Migoletto and Micaela from Carmen. She's totally at home singing these very ingenuic, delicious roles. And with hearing her as Ines, yes, it's a very thankless role for any lyric soprano. But she sings this role with such finesse and beauty that's actually really, really much a treat for me to watch her on stage. And she has a darling stage presence to boot, singing the ungratifying role of Don Gaspar is Matthew Newland. Now, just like with Fana, Don Gaspar does need a lyric tenor voice as well. Though in this case, it's basically a character role, but it's not like your typical character role. He still needs a lot of fine florid singing as well. And with Matthew Newland, what more can I say about him? I've seen this gentleman in a lot of different productions. He has a very fine voice as usual, he has a very fine technique and an equally fine stage presence. So overall, what more can I say about the singing? It's absolutely top tier with everyone giving their all in every single moment they're in and just singing their hearts out. So kudos to all of the singers for doing such outstanding jobs and even in terms of the conducting done by Maestro Pietro Rizzo, and even with the leading of the chorus done by Maestro William Spaulding. They did very well, and Mr. Rizzo did a very fabulous job with the orchestra, especially when they really got me into every single moment of the opera, and it was just absolutely fabulous. So overall, I may be sad that this is also the final um, performance of this of this opera so far, given that it even performed six, or performed its premiere six days ago. But still, I am extremely blessed to have seen such such effort and such beauty and grace put in into one wonderful product, and to really really see it bloom and really come to fruition. And I'm actually really glad that I finally really got introduced to this opera very well. And even in terms of even being more familiar with it, because in terms of my experience with La Favorita, I only knew or only heard a couple of arias, but seeing this whole opera was just such a blast. Well, that's all for, for now. Be sure to tune in for another review. So until then, good night, everybody.